No. Ha 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 ha. Hey, we did it. I'm scared. What ha. if I fall backwards? Stop, stop, stop. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> <Gave> birth. <laughs> do 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 Hey mamas! Family edition! This is the 2024 Toyota Grand Highlander Limited Hybrid Max! That is a mouthful. And so is this. This is the 2024 Mazda CX-90 S Premium Plus Edition. And today we're going to see how they compare. A lot of you moms are saying, it's my dream car! It's my dream car! We now have the Grand Highlander, which is not the regular Highlander. This is an all new vehicle for 2024. And what are we getting? We are getting a body that looks like a blend of the RAV4, Highlander, and something else. I don't know, but it's looking real good. You get a massive grill up front, slimmer LED headlights on this limited trim. You also get fog lights. Now this is a bit of a throwback for me. I used to have a white RAV4. Now this is our wind chill pearl paint with all those beautiful flakes. Glitter. It's shiny. It's shiny. I love it. You get 20 inch two-tone wheels. On the side we have some chrome roof rails and a bigger boxier side profile. Around the... <coughs> Around the back, you have these RAV4 style taillights, your big Hubbard Max badge, and your dual exhaust ports. Overall, this looks way better than the Highlander and the RAV4. That Grand Highlander is all new for Toyota, and the CX-90 is all new for Mazda. It's not just a continuation of the CX-9, it's a distinct model, and it's Mazda's biggest yet. Up front, we've got this Kodo design grill with a black insert, and it's kind of straight up and down. Bookending that grill are these compact projector LED headlights, and below those, instead of fog lights, we've got pass-throughs for air to flow through and cool these tires and brakes, because Mazda cares about performance. At the side of the Premium Plus, we've got these 20-inch wheels wrapped in all-season tires, and then if you see this inline six-cylinder badge, you know you're dealing with a Mac Daddy twin-turbo inline six engine. Here at the side, the body panels are very straight up and down. Christina, go around to that way and just look okay. at how straight up and down this is. A lot of new SUVs are going for curvaceousness, and this one is not. What do you think about it? Whoa, she ain't thick. She ain't thick. She doesn't have the hips, and I think I want the hips, but she does have the humps. So here oh, at the God. back, we've got this <laughs> curve to the tailgate that then comes down like this very BMW XM design. And I don't know I like it on that SUV, and I'm not sure I like it here. I do like the thin LED tail lights here that come into the middle, and then we don't have any exposed exhaust ports, which is also something I feel like is missing. I want to see the exhaust ports. Mm. Design-wise, I don't know. Between the two, what do you think, Christina? Which do you mm, prefer? I'm going to go with the Grand Highlander. I'm also going to go with the Grand Highlander, but I do like this Artisan Red. This is a very cool color. Agreed. In the Grand Highlander, in the Grand Highlander, we have a heated steering wheel. You now get a digital gauge cluster that's 12.3 inches. Could you be more excited about that? A Another digital gauge cluster. 12.3 inch screen here with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And check this out Toyota upgraded their backup cam. Over here, you've got some physical buttons so that you can easily turn on your heated and cooled seats. Don't mind my jacked up. <laughs> Hey, oh, what, what is do? happening? Down here, you've got two USB C's. I do another. Understand. Why does she do that? I'm using a louder speaking volume. I don't think I need to be louder. No Why one's not? ever, ever <laughs> said that to you before. Another USB C up here. This little grippy storage area. Here in the center, you've got your wireless charging cup holders. Oh, that's a large one. Put your big bottle in there. I'm going to do this. Okay, here we go. Oh boy! It fits! It fits! The Grand Highlander has 13 cup holders. In here, whoa, that's deep. And then you can remove this. Why did tray. you take on a southern accent? Like, what did you do? Why do to take I do these on? things? These seats are perforated leatherette with suede inserts and bronze accents, plus, they've got great lumbar support. This trim has a panoramic sunroof that you can also enjoy from the second row. Grand Highlander, hey, hey, in the Grand Highlander, oh, oh. oh. With the Grand Highlander, in the Grand Highlander. Here I am in the second row, and I have a car seat behind me, and look at this leg room. I'm still very comfortable. How tall are you? At 5'9". Five 5'9", nine. Five nine. Mm -hmm. good to know. For your car seat setup, you have four tethers, three sets of lower latch anchors, with two car seats in, yeah? 
How are you feeling? I'm good. I got knee room. My legs aren't fully extended. I would like to be able to extend them a little more. Headroom's good. And how tall Back's are you? Not six feet tall. My back is not fully upright, so that's good. Now, let's take out the car seats and I want to show you the slide. Without the car seats in, your seats recline. You've got a nice armrest, an organizer in the center with two cup holders. Here's your third zone of climate control, heated seats, two USB C's, an AC outlet, sunshades on the side, and vents up top. You have three levers down below, and the first one is going to move the seat forward and back. Woo, super slide, which is really great for access to the back. Behind my second row position, I've got enough leg room, but my head's close to the top. If I do this, lean back, lean back. I've got plenty of headroom. There are cup holders on each side, USB-Cs, and vents up top. Let's move on to the trunk. Either pull the lever on top or down below to get out. Behind the third row, you've got 21 cubic feet of space, and with all the seats folded flat, you've got 98. Are all you mamas and papas ready for this? Double stroller test. Looks promising. It fits. I feel pretty good about that. Let's see if the Mazda holds up. Now in the Mazda CX-90 where things go upscale. We're talking about premium white Napa leather seating. These seats are heated and ventilated. We got this black textured stripe and the seats are perforated. This awesome textured fabric insert has this Japanese style stitching element to it. Here's a 12.3 inch infotainment system. Thing is, it's not a touchscreen unless you're using the wireless Apple CarPlay or Android Auto function. So that means most of the time you're using the scroll wheel down here. Don't have a problem with that. With some hot keys, you got a physical volume knob and tuner. Wood, the genuine wood on here is beautiful. It feels it amazing. Gorgeous. It's covering up the cup that. holders. This is so much better than gloss black. The companies that use gloss black, it's just lazy and it smudges and it scratches. You've got a DC outlet there, wireless charging pad, physical climate inputs, and you've got a steering wheel heating button here for your leather wrapped wheel which feels really nice in the hands. Digital gauge cluster has some mild reconfigurations. There's also a head up display. This is like injection molding. You've got memory functions for the driver's seat. And we also get a panoramic roof, though it's not as big as the Highlander. The grand Highlander gets a grand panoramic roof. Let's see what that looks like from the back row. Eh, it looks okay. All right, in the second row, these seats are also heated and ventilated, really Ooh. premium. The back of the seat's all in leather, none of that plastic stuff. You got a map pocket, you got big foot pockets, and I'm at six feet tall behind my own seating position, still have some knee room here. I got a console with two cup holders. So that means with this console, we get a six seater configuration, and the Grand Highlander actually has a seven seater setup with the middle third row seat. You can get it with an eight seater setup. This one, you can get with seven seats with this being a bench, not the captain's chairs. We got a deep console with some good storage. You've got two USB-C ports there, third zone of climate control, and then we also have sunshades. Take that, Grand Highlander. These seats also slide. Not as far. And recline. Eh, not as far slide, but the recline's about the same. Let's go to row three to climb on. Oh. Oh, hey, hey. Oh. <laughs> the double whammy. <laughs> to get to the third row, pull on this tab. The seat will angle and slide, giving you a Decent access point, not as wide as the Grand Highlander. And then to climb on back, let me move the seat to right there. That's about where it was. And I still have knee room here. And importantly, I've got headroom. These seats don't really recline any further. So it's a good thing I do have headroom. I also have cup holders and a USB-C port and air vents that are down here to cool my kneecaps. To get out, you pull on this tab and good luck. Before we get the car seats in here, I will mention we've got four top tethers and three lower latch anchors, just like the Grand Highlander. Okay, now car seat in the third row and the second, and putting those in, by the way, was a lot easier because the doors open really wide. Christina didn't want me to mention it. I'm mentioning it anyway. What's it like up in the front passenger seat? Ah, uh, it's a bit tight. What? Tight like a toy gun. Okay, not super comfortable? Not for a long time, no. And you don't think I would fit there, right? No. Back's definitely more upright and knees have more bend. Not as good. Not as good. Let's put them to the test. On the, this is lower. Here we go. On the road. It's a new day. It's a new day. 
got some fresh Fresh jeans. clothes on. Fresh clothes are on. <laughs> yeah. Miles loves to say, we got some fresh clothes on. Just want to count the wins because sleep is definitely not among them. We got our newborn here with us and who's been keeping you particularly up all night, mm -hmm. every night. So Christina's running on fumes. That's a bad combination with her also attempting to drive and talk. So that's why I'm in the driver's seat yeah, in the Grand Islander. Yeah, I am not Islander. good at driving and talking. But you have been driving this vehicle, so you can yes. talk about how yes, it yes, drives. Yes. What are our engine options, Christina? All right, you got three engine options. So this one is the Jefe, if you will. El right? Jefe. El Jefe. El Jefe. It's the granddaddy. Okay. I'm sorry, too much. <laughs> Four-cylinder turbo hybrid max. Mm -hmm. 362 horsepower! Yeah! Ooh, it sounds kind of good too. It does sound good. And that's actually a lot of power for this segment of vehicle while also getting, what, 25 combined? What other engine options do we have? All right, you're gonna have a hybrid option that mm -hmm. is not a turbo yes. engine. So that's gonna make the least amount of power. Yep. And then you have a four cylinder turbo engine, non hybrid. Not hybrid. Yeah, that makes pretty good power. If you want that power and fuel economy, you're gonna wanna go with the hybrid max. And this this transmission's really smooth. The brake pedal is a little hard to get used to. Not when you're at speed, but when you're coming up to a slow stop. It's that, that friction and regen braking handoff, basically like the car slowing itself with the electric motor that then bleeding in with the friction braking it oh, just feels okay. a little weird you got to get used to that with a brake it pedal it takes time like it doesn't brake as fast as i want it to brake what about the ride quality how do we feel about the ride is it smooth it's a bit busy on the road yeah. so you do feel some bumpies yeah i mean this, on, like, is, this is a really is a very smooth road it's moving around a little bit more than i think it should but the seats though seats are great seats are great 10 way power adjustable oh yeah on your side on my side what about okay. your side what do you got uh, Nine, 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 ten, and nine? A little less power <laughs> little adjustment. Less. I'm not seat. sure. <laughs> just not as much. You're the passenger. I know it's less. You're not the driver. So just <laughs> fewer adjustment levels. Yeah. One thing you were definitely praising while driving this vehicle was the visibility, and I, I get what you're saying. The big windows all over the place make it easy to see just about everywhere. I mean, that D pillar back there has a little blind spot, but you got your standard blind spot monitor. You drive this vehicle with confidence. You could also get a digital rear view mirror. You can. As an option, which... I love that. We've got that on the Cadillac, on the Blackwing. Yeah. And it's so nice. It doesn't matter like what's in the back seat. You just see right through that with the digital yeah. rear view. I do like how quiet it is in the cabin. Yes. Yeah, I only heard from that engine when I was full throttle. Otherwise, it's kind of just mellow in the background. Also and it sounded good, so we did didn't sound mind. good, so yeah, I didn't mind that. Road imperfections aren't heard all that much inside here. There's not that booming resonance that can sometimes happen. Easily have conversations right. at highway speeds. And, Hear the kids in the third row. Uh, I will say the steering is kind of vague. Like, you can place the Grand Highlander in the lane, but certainly if you quick turn here, you wouldn't be sure quite how much steering effort you should put in. Yeah, not a lot I'm, of feedback. Not a lot of feedback, not dialed in. Let's go over to the Mazda and see how that drives and compares. Let's do it. All right, it's CX-90 time. And one thing I realized that we didn't mention at all during the Grand Highlander yes. video was that that's an all-wheel drive vehicle and so is the CX-90, but while the Grand Highlander is a front-wheel drive biased all-wheel drive system, the CX-90 is rear-wheel drive biased which basically means that it's just a little more lively, a little more playful. It's more fun to drive. It's more fun to drive. This feels sportier. And it sounds good too. 340 horsepower at our disposal in this version of the CX-90. We've got the 3.3 liter turbo inline six cylinder. It's a new inline six cylinder engine from Mazda. This vehicle has a mild hybrid system. They also have a plug-in hybrid version of the CX-90 that you've driven. Yes and you weren't as much of a fan of that one, is that right? I would go with this one. You'd go with this one? Yes, Just a little more one. entertaining to drive, yes, the power is yes. better. While the Grand Highlander steering was light but ambiguous, this one is light but communicative. Like you really know how you're telegraphing a curve. It's more entertaining to drive and it's more confidence inspiring. Let's talk about ride quality. Mm -hmm. So the CX-90 is a bit 
smoother. This one on smoother roads, while the Grand Highlander still felt kind of busy, this, yeah. this settles in. Yeah, I would say it, it would be difficult to notice unless you've driven them back to back. The quiet wise, what do we think about the cabin it's a serenity? Little quieter in here. A little quieter in here as well. Again, that's Mazda going for that premium to entry level luxury vibe. I don't, yeah, I don't know if it's like the feel of the materials too and the ambiance, yeah. but it feels a little calmer and quieter. It's a little more zen in here. I yeah. agree. I think every time we settle down in life, we go, let's, let's just add, add something to that. I want to be stress. tension in the shoulders. That sounds good. Let's film with a newborn. Just, you know, it's for fun. Film with a newborn, right? What's I think that? every time she oh, bursts be out in a, in a new a new cry, that. I get like a new gray hair. It's like correlated. It's like, <laughs> how? Okay, oh, then I is. would be full on gray. Silver fox. That's for men, right? What are women? Are they also silver foxes? Silverina? What? A silver wolverine? Uh, Back to the ZX. What are you talking about? Can you see? In this vehicle. It's like, yes, still. Uh, yeah, in this vehicle, the front glass is good. These front windows are solid. But as I look back there, I'm seeing a much bigger blind spot over at that D pillar than you get in the Grand Highlander. Of course, we do have blind spot monitoring this vehicle as well, but it's always nice to be able to see with the naked eye. What about fuel economy? How are we doing on that? At 25. That's pretty impressive. This is not a conventional full on hybrid, it's just that mild hybrid that's running like the accessory functions. So it not being a full hybrid comes down to this being a lighter weight vehicle as well. So yeah. And you can feel that when you're driving it. Yes, right? you do. Yeah. You do feel, and that's that leads back to like it being easier and more pleasurable to drive. Okay. To the results. Where is she? I'm going to Starbucks for two minutes, babe. Just gotta get my job, I'll get my quick fix. I'll be right back. There you I'm are. Here. Got your coffee, you happy? I mean, yeah, but they put too much ice, so. Always something. Hey, we gotta wrap this one up. Wrap it up. What are we saying about these two SUVs? Okay, the CX-90 buyer. They wanna live the posh life with kids and maybe don't have luxury car money to spend and maybe they enjoy driving more than the average person. True, but if you want something more practical, more accommodating, more fuel efficient and overall better looking, you're gonna wanna go with the Grand Highlander. Yep. That's the breakdown. Which would you guys choose? Let us know in the comments. See you next time. See you next. Why am I more enthusiastic than you are? Your mobile mama. I'm laughing. Hot up here. Gosh. I'm biking. Seriously, I need like, I'm going to be a Chris. A chicharron, if you will. I love chicharron. <laughs> I'm into it. Good. Okay, I'm into it. All right.